Blessed be the Lord, my strength, who teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. Trust. to the game for Battlefield 1. Sit. <laughs> Battlefield so, yeah, 1. Latest instalment by EA Dice. I am so excited for this, mate. Yeah, you're taking so a lead on this one. But we are going to cut off it a little bit. I didn't authorise this, mate, but I'm going to allow it. 15 instalments of Battlefield. And there was so much hype surrounding this game. I know, right? The hypest we game. We play this now. It's one of the hypest games. Yeah. Well, let's go. You don't Do need it. to tell us what Battlefield is. Select character. Battlefield 1! This is going to be a big one for us. It is, it is. And it's weird because everyone already knows probably a lot of what Battlefield's all about. <laughs> I'll say I sunk about 10, 11 hours into this. You were way more like 30 yeah. hours. I think you maybe took the lead on this one. Hooked on it, mate. So, DICE back again. 15th, 15th installment of Battlefield. But covering all, like... Aspects of war, if you like, World War One, World War Two. Yeah, returning to it, and this it's got to be said, the hype for this game was unbelievable yeah. when people saw the zeppelins, the horseback riding, and all that kind of stuff. And the best of the big question is, did it live up to the hype or what were you hoping for? I mean, we had fun, for sure. Uh, so we had a story, of course, They're always spectacular, over the top cinematic story. Uh, we split this in two, so I did a couple of sections because it's how is it divided up, Andy? Uh, you do the prologue, which basically sets the tone of the game. It tells you like all the aspects of World War One, what was happening in different countries, in different battalions, and it's like it's a mandatory. You have to do the prologue. I think something they were aiming for is one: it's not uber realistic. Let's be fair; it's not uber realistic. I mean, yeah. I essentially got a mech suit at one point. But uh, what they are saying is that this was carnage from start to finish. And I think that's a good way for a, a good way for younger audiences to maybe appreciate just how quickly and how often people would just rip, you know, during World War One. It's it's hard to imagine it when you read about it. You read about, you know, thousands and thousands of people pouring out of the trenches and just being mowed to yeah. fucking death. But that's like what I was saying is when I when I read that, it was a bit wow, that's gloomy. But then when you get into it, you really do get a feel of hopelessness. Oh, absolutely. Basically, even being absolutely overrun. Even the multiplayer, it paid off that well. But yeah. the, all the stories they told through the war campaign, at least the ones that I did, were just so fucking grim. They were insane. They were so fucking grim. You were still a superhero, though. Yeah. You were still the one-man army but like, of undefeatable Every Christians. one of them was so different. But I mean, even though they were literally short stories or war stories, as they're called, and you can do them in any order, but each one of them was in a different part of the world, a different battalion or unit, but each one of them had its story as well. It was an individual story, and it was so Hollywood. Not in a bad way, but like really well-produced, nicely presented story. I had the story of Gallipoli, was one of what I did, which is All a right. movie that I love. I actually uh, watched it in high school. Yeah. Uh, Mel Gibson movie, mate. Nice. All about classic nice. Mel when he's back in the day, about runners, because obviously we didn't have phones or good communications yeah. in World War One. So they literally had poor motherfuckers <laughs> whose job it was to sprint through the war yeah. to deliver messages. Like, that was it. It was like, you need to go and tell this guy this. You're not to fight, really. You're to run like a bastard all the way through everything. <laughs> like a and bastard. just hope and pray that you're not going to fucking die. Yeah. And they had sprinters. In the movie, it was like, this guy was a famous track runner. So it was like, well, you're a sprinter, so this is your job, is to run through oh, bullet shit. fire in hell. That's like a death sentence for being an athlete, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. That's what it was. Absolutely. And they, they gave it off quite well. They had, but I'll still maintain, I think they need to maintain, one, the easiness. And the campaign is easy. I mean, you are just the fucking hero. You can die. Yeah, uh, You can die, but it's mainly a case of you're designed to beat it and just play out the story. But it, it all went out kind of well. It was a lot of forced emotion, I thought. They were really trying to make you cry, and I was like, I'm not going to I'm not. Do you know this. what? I'm on the other end of the spectrum. I was so invested. In the short amount of time, I think that's why I love them so much, is in the short amount of time, 
Like for me, my favourite one was the I can't remember the name of it. It's but it's the uh, British Tank Battalion, and you get you're the you're the engineer, you're the driver, um, and then you meet your captain, you meet your unit and stuff, all different personalities, and obviously it starts to go south as you progress on. You find out you're the only tank left in your battalion, but you've still got to press on to be like occupied. I think it's occupied France, um, but then obviously things start happening to your unit in in like very dramatic ways. But it's so good the way that they do it when it's, and then it switches from gameplay to cinematic and back and forth. But I really, really enjoyed it. And like, I don't, obviously it's it's each to their own, but I was well invested in the characters. I was almost invested if I wasn't Mega Man. And the, one of the campaigns I did, like say, I essentially got a mech suit, which didn't exist in World War One. I. I mean, <laughs> I, I, walk, I walk up a hill. Uh, in a mech suit. Is oh, it's the um, it's the bullet suit, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a basically suit, a suit but you of like armor. Sprint up a hill yeah. and you kill hundreds. Yeah, of <laughs> it's fucking crazy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, on the but the guy's going, and then I had to find out what happened to Genio. And uh, it was fucking, it was cool, but it was it was just it's a spectacle, as it always is. It's an absolute spectacle. Like I say, it's a Hollywood movie. And I think targeting the audience they're targeting is the best way of delivering it. Absolutely. Because if it was just super grim and horrible and you just died, if every mission was like the prologue where, as you say, you die over and over and over and over again, uh, that would have been rubbish. Yeah. But the, the fact is they married a balance there between trying to give you the idea of just how devastating the war was to everybody because, you know, there was families dying and all that yeah. kind of stuff. While simultaneously still making people feel like they were Superman. Which Absolutely. I think is what they were after. And overall, I thought the campaign was really fucking cool. Really good, yeah. Uh, every time, though, with Battlefield, every time, I think even the the more, I say frowned upon, but the not so much celebrated Battlefields, like Hardline, the campaign in Hardline was still really good, even though the multiplayer sucked. But that's just the quality of the Battlefield campaigns, and they're so underrated because of how good the multiplayer is as mm. well. So the gameplay, gameplay then, let's talk about the gameplay. So not unsurprising, it's Battlefield. Yes. Right? I mean, it's Battlefield and they have such a formulaic way of playing Battlefield. I think a lot of, do you think a lot of people were expecting something different? No. I, I, don't I think, think so. to be honest, I think they absolutely nailed it again. It's the same because what people take for granted is is creating the same field through Battlefield multiplayers in different genres. And that sounds so easy to do because, oh, you just reskin the weapons. You re no, because you've got different buildings, you've got different destructible environments, you've got different weapons um, and different, like, weapon behaviours and stuff like dips on sniper rifles and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I think they absolutely nailed it. At first, I knew straight off the bat, like, I can't remember the name of the map, I think it's actually Gallipoli. It's, you know, the mountain base that we went yep. on. I thought... If I'm not sniping, I really, really, really have to get into the buildings because I know there's going to be back. a perimeter of snipers. <laughs> and uh, I don't have the footage because it was when we were testing. It was right, my, and uh, this is why the very first multiplayer game we booted into to check everything was working. The very first message that appeared in my chat was camper faggots. And I was like, welcome wow. back to Battlefield. Yep, <laughs> welcome back to Battlefield. It. It's everything I remember. But they, they stick to the same line as always. You've got the COD for the arcade. You've got armor for the pure simulation, let's this say. And then Battlefield's like the right middle. in the middle. You're going to die quickly, but yeah. you can also... It's not it's not run and gun. No, no. And it's the fun. same, it's the like same it. thing you're going to get from any Battlefield game. Yeah. I mean, like, as well as because we it was only us two and we weren't a, a huge pre-made in a lobby. I like the fact that some of the units, obviously... Like in every other game that you, you, you pick up a... Well, you get a pug, is some units will just be there for winning. Some of them will work as a unit, and you get that unit with your leader who will say, like... He will give orders. Like, you can you can request orders, but he'll give orders. And that unit sticks together. Yep. And that's so much fun. Like, you've got, you've got your yeah, healers... Yeah, just by making you deploy you in your own exactly. unit. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Just making yeah. you deploy in your own unit, that made it I so it you that all that kind stuck. of stuck together. Although there wasn't much communication. I mean, we were obviously chatting together in the room, but yeah. there wasn't much communication with the puppies that we were playing with, which was fine. I did think... I mean, I think it fits the theme really well, because you do die very, very quickly in Battlefield. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of times where you can just log in, you can just spawn in, suddenly you're dead. That happens pretty regularly, and you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, you have more moments of, what the fuck just killed me, <laughs> than uh, maybe I particularly like. I'm more, I've got to be honest, and a lot of people won't know this, especially long-time viewers of the channel. I actually really enjoy COD multiplayer. That's my style of multiplayer. I, I like uh, COD multiplayer, arcade. and I like, um, I'm a, a huge fan of Doom-style multiplayer. That's, yeah. my, that's my main jam. But out of this the sort of series, is if it's a COD or Battlefield choice, which I think most people come down to eventually, I'm more of a COD guy. I quite yeah. enjoy a little bit of COD every now and again. I know, I know, people are like, what? 
That's it, yeah. It's a fun no, shooter. Kind of good it's a fun it's shooter. Just it's just like, a fun shooter. Yeah. That's all I like. And you either like Battlefield style or you like COD style, generally speaking. Yeah. Uh, but I generally move over to that. I did think, though, with the theme of World War One and fitting with the campaign, which is that, you know, you die really fucking quickly, uh, that that actually added to that World War One theme, is that you just basically put through a meat grinder. Constantly Absolutely. put through a meat grinder. Absolutely. Uh, the Levolution, not quite the same as we saw in Battlefield 4, which we both played a hell of a lot of. We didn't play any on stream, but we played a lot of Battlefield 4. I've got to admit, though, I noticed that a lot more when I started to use the vehicles just to test it. Yeah, they had a lot of destruct... All the buildings were destructible. Yeah. I mean, at one point, there was a guy hiding on the second floor of a building. He's like sniping out the window, but he kept being really sort of lame about it and just popping out every now and again. Yeah. So I blew the floor out of the, out of the building. Exactly. <laughs> so I just exactly. blew the floor out of the building. I was yeah. like, well, if you're gonna do that, then fuck you. Uh, I'm not gonna do that at all. But um, I did feel like the World War One theme comes through in Battlefield really well, with you just constantly, I mean, sometimes you can just grab a turret as the enemy's moving across a bridge and you can just rinse through them all. But on, so the, on the flip side, like for me, um, I think I've got quite a bit of footage of it. It's moving with your unit through whatever environment, but you're getting shelled. Yep. And the gravel and the rocks and things are flying up alongside you. The screen's rumbling. There's that bass in your ears. And it's so tense. But it, that's what I mean. They do it every time. It's perfectly done like I'm glad that. you said that. Because that, for me, is something that makes me prefer COD. Because I find the, uh, the cinematic effort they go to in Battlefield, sometimes you just can't see what's going on. And I know that's intentional. Yeah. That's intentional because you've got the mud flying out the pits, you've got the shells and explosions, your screen's rumbling, this, uh, especially when smoke comes down. Yeah. Oh, uh, mustard gas, it's really, you have to put your gas mask on, you have to cover over your peripheral. For me, I don't like that because I can't see what's going on. And that's often when you lead to being dead because you literally, like, something's happened which you couldn't possibly have predicted. And then suddenly you can't see anything. And that's when, for me, it's like, ah, oh, you know, I don't know what. And then suddenly it'll cut to, like, who killed you? And he's somebody fucking miles away. He's like this, <laughs> uh, hiding in a bush or something like that. But yeah, like, I mean, it, it didn't happen for me. I got killed by it, but there was a lot of awesome little tactics that I saw. I know that as soon as people were leveling assault, you unlock a shotgun. Now, a shotgun comes with several perks. The fact that it is really, really fucking powerful. But then you'll get a team of people who will make a squad of shotgunners with all mustard gas. Because when you've got your gas mask on, you can't use the iron sight on your weapons either. Correct. But obviously you don't need that with the scatter yep. of a shotgun. So they would literally wait for like, uh, I think it was the train map in the forest where it was point B. Oh, with butter, butters, mate. mate. Point I butter. was the king of butters. Yeah. I they, went in heavy machine gun. <laughs> <laughs> they pepper that place with mustard gas and just leg it in and absolutely yeah. I love like butters people. on that. Um, so uh, just saying on the evolution. So this time they've chosen more, well, the Zeppelins are the big one. What did you think of the Zeppelins? Several different things. Uh, I hated to be beneath it. Yeah. When it was shooting down upon me, but I liked I like being in the cannon, fair enough. But one thing that I really liked is when I went to the Zeppelin as a scout, because when you leave the Zeppelin, you get out on top of the Zeppelin, mm -hmm. and you can snipe from the top of the Zeppelin. That was crisp. I uh, for me, the Zeppelins were again a mixed bag, the same as you. Uh, I didn't think they were. I thought they were visually amazing, like yeah. them come crashing down and all that was really cool. Other than that, though, they served. Less of a purpose than I'd like. I preferred the train in that little you said there, where oh, the train okay. moves backwards and forwards through the map. Yeah, the thing with the, the Zeppelin train. is, it's easier to target than the train. The train's obviously a specific area, it's a specific line of sight, whereas the Zeppelin, it's very, very powerful. It needs to be dealt with quickly. And if you've got people who are playing the same sort of assault class that aren't going to deal with that, mm -hmm. it's going to stay there and rinse your troops. I guess I felt more it was done for spectacle over function. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah it was. They, kind know, of like the, of, uh, yeah. the, the, the... the skyscraper Yeah, the skyscraper. And, the, and in... the boat that came crashing in, which changed yeah. the whole dynamic of the map. Absolutely. And the points and stuff. They, they, instead of that, they went with... I think they decided to do more super weapons based on just that will look so cool. Even and if player interaction as well. Yeah, I just thought, I thought, I thought it was done for coolness. And it, it certainly was just... It's a visual marvel. There's yeah. no way of getting away from that. And it ran fucking so well. Absolutely. Holy yeah. shit. I mean, we were always at 140 FPS. We was much. like, yeah, you've got obviously top end, mine's slightly low, but we're both fraps in and literally had no frame yeah, drop whatsoever. Wonderful. So they pulled also some stuff from Battlefront in this one, the Star Wars variation. See, this, which is the this for me was a pain in the ass because I was obviously reading what other people thought of the game. And people hated the elite units. Mm. It's like, oh, it's a rip off of um, of Star Wars. There's no need for it in the battlefield. And I was like, come on, I'll tell you something, right? So what if they've got an elite unit? Yeah, it's the same. It's the same thing as, as Star Wars. But in comparison, you've got about a third of the health as those heroes from Star Wars. And the fact that 
it looked good even being on the receiving end of it of a big like heavily armored flamethrower unit and you're in part of his unit who stood behind him pressing forward he's in front of it basically tanking bullets but it's still completely avoidable, completely manageable, and killable. I never compared it. I mean, I only played very little Battlefront. I didn't enjoy it, but it was nothing on the lines of like when Darth took. Yeah, just picks you up by your throat. <laughs> you know what what I mean? yards it was away. nothing like that. No. I actually thought it was kind of cool, and it seemed to me, and uh, I didn't check this, and I should have. It seemed to me that you generally got them near you if you were getting, if that area of the map was getting particularly minced up. Right. Okay. So if your team was constantly in an area like you were doing capture the capture the points or whatever. Yeah. And you were getting battered constantly, and this fight was always one-sided. Is that you seem to get more? You get the audio. I noticed that when we were on the losing side, is that right. we get kept because you get a message saying there's a flamethrower thing nearby. Yes, I noticed that a lot more. But when we were winning, barely saw Barry it. Anything. Barely saw it. So I, I think it was just something to try and keep the battle even and give people a chance to come back. And again, I didn't think it was super overpowered like you didn't. No, no. All if I saw a flamethrower guy, they were pretty easy to take out if you were doing it's, it right. But that's the whole. That's the whole point of it. Is it's. It's the same arseholes that complain about this. Is put, in, put yourself in the position, if you're on your own, and then you're in a trench and you see a flamethrower guy, you fucking run. You don't try and combat that, it will kill you immediately. Well, I'm not going to face tank a flamethrower. That's what I mean. If, if you're with your unit, <laughs> if you're with your unit, you pepper that bitch with grenades, yeah. and then with like constant gunfire, well, it's, it's going it's to go down. It's all because the war campaign, the campaign story is a tutorial. It's just like the air, the air mission, the tank mission, and yeah. then it teaches you how to deal with these elite units. Like, Absolutely. use grenades on these guys. Um, what else did they pull in then? So, what did you think of the horseback riding? Because this was something that we saw now, in the trailer and everyone lost their fucking mind. I'd say what, the horseback riding for me, at first I thought, wow, that's really gimmicky. But then I totally got the utility of horseback, especially on um, in the desert levels. Yeah, with the sandstorms and stuff. Now, a horseback is fucking beautiful for sweeping the perimeter of snipers. Yep. Literally, like a brush with a sabre. Just smashing the heads off people as you're going past. It's obvious they the the player still takes the same amount of damage as the player. Obviously, the horse is like an armored unit. They take a lot of they damage. They do, but you can still one shot the person on horseback. I did yeah. that a few times as a sniper, but I I liked it, man. I liked the gimmick that it was there. It was, I thought it was nice and different because they had uh, motorbikes and stuff that you. Could yes, do to they go did. With the little but I much cats. prefer to ride the fucking horse. Absolutely, every single goddamn yeah. time. What about the flying then? Oh. The same as always. I mean, you, no. you have a controller on standby for flying. Yeah, I always have the uh, control pad on my knee for when we get in vehicles. But the flying in this was, obviously, it's a mixed bag of my gaming experience and my actual skill level with it. It's in things like Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4. Aircraft combat, I was always a lot better with. In this one, it just felt like as soon as I was over the battlefield, straight off the bat, every time I would be peppered by ground, by air, by anti-air shells, yeah, by anti-vehicle rounds. And it wasn't because I crashed. No. Before anyone said so. Well, apparently <laughs> um, there's been a patch where they've had to reduce... I mean, because I was always either picking a fighter or an air-to-air -air combat vehicle, fighter being like a mixed bag, but apparently the, everyone picks a bomber unit because... In a recent patch, the health had to be reduced a bit because of how much it could take, but apparently it's still really, really strong, whereas the fighters are just getting minced by yeah, these Yeah, I was in the fighter every time, because I prefer Same the as, But you were very it. restricted on your movement as well. Unless it was a really open map, I felt like I was turning around yeah. a lot and coming back in. But overall, it was the same sort of thing you'd see in Battlefield. Yeah, I think that's time. it was a very minor point. I'm going to try a, a bit more. But vehicle combat on the whole, like ground vehicles, like the tanks, the armoured personnel carriers, the bikes, the horses, absolutely loved it. Bombers being in the pilot or the gunner loved it. I think it was just my my bad experience was just from the fighters, but that's a very minor negative, I'd say. So did you have any other negatives? Just literally, I was thinking about it for so fucking long. The only negative that I can think of is the fact that there's going to be no third-party hosting servers. Ah, so no customised rules. Really, Absolutely, there's going to be no customised rules. There's going to be no uh, modded maps or anything like that. So that. The, the glory of this used to be that the, the server host could create these fun little mini-games in the actual map, just to vary it up a little. It wouldn't be a constant mini-game map. They'd just throw it in occasionally. You know, like there'd be some sort of criteria, like uh, it'd be in a smaller, dense area of, like, and they barbed wire it off and you just have pistols. You know, just little games that would be very quick, or even long others. Sometimes there's even role-play servers. Where that sounds really weird in Battlefield, but roleplay servers, if you don't know that in Battlefield, is people fully, and these are the servers that I want to play on, people fully adhere to like 
a raw a raw war type role play. Mm-hmm. You stick with your unit. You constantly get orders and are given orders. You've been given a role. And you have to keep this, that role like a job. You're like the medic, you're the repair guy. That for me is perfect. That mm. happens a lot in armor, and it used to happen a lot on obviously on the role play designated third party servers for Battlefield. But that's taken all that away. But what's really concerning is now we have to put all our faith in their anti cheating software. Yeah. You know, there can't be no third party anti cheat software, which fucking sucks. But I will say, in fairness, I've had no problems so far. Not that I've noticed. No. Not that I've noticed at all. Nothing like that. But there is, there is like EA. I think I don't know if this is like, you know, a power play, like a money cash grab. But EA doing rent a servers for it. Shocking. It's, it's not <laughs> shocking, shocking when EA. it's EA. I but am shocked I, yeah. and stunned, EA. I genuinely am shocked and stunned. But I mean, really. they they they're turning every game into a cash count now. I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, Dungeon Keeper, iOS, never oh, forget. Stop. Uh, so stop. what's our conclusion to Battlefield One then? It's if you uh, if, dude, if you're a fan of Battlefield, it. you should be a fan of this. Yes, yes, that I absolutely fucking loved it. It's literally, I knew I was gonna like it. Just very rarely now, even with the big AAA titles where I love the franchise, that I'll look at something and think. Uh, I hope they don't mess it up. I'm optimistic, but this I thought it's going to be mint. Mm-hmm. It's going to be so fucking good, and it was as well. It had the dynamic of a battlefield. It had the perfect feel of a World War One combat simulator. I guess I the only it. reason you dislike it is if you're tired of the battlefield series at all, oh, on a whole. Yeah, if you obviously this is a very niche thing, where uh, what we spoke, we brushed on it before is it's like imagine it like a rainbow. You've got the arc, the full arcade style of Call of Duty on one side complete simulation of armor on the other and this is smack dab in the middle you don't have to adhere you don't have to adhere to the full grind of a simulation like armor but you've got to account for things like and people this is why people don't like it and it's such a minor thing like dip of a bullet on a sniper yeah you know things like that but that's that's it's touching simulation but it's not over no, simulated it's not over simulated I fucking love it it's a perfect mix for me the but campaign yeah. i thought was really cool i mean I, I, as i said i i will probably be more into COD. Uh, we haven't had a chance to play it yet because we've got BlizzCon yeah. uh, this weekend. So I'm going to be looking at that at some point. I know we're behind behind the gate on that one, but that's okay. And um, that's more my kind of thing. I enjoyed this though. I did enjoy playing it. Uh, it's not something I'll go back to a lot, but it's still something that I thought this is a decent game. I actually enjoyed playing through the campaign. I thought it was really over the top, but simultaneously I got that they were trying to send a message to the right audience for them yeah they knew how to convey that message in a way that would work for them guys so i thought that was pretty cool uh people who'd enjoy it then i'm gonna guess i think if you like you should enjoy in, it like in terms said. of yeah in terms of fps there's a market for everything you've, you've got simulation you've got arcade you've got jump in jump out and then you've got battlefield battlefield for me is the perfect mix of everything so people enjoy this people who've played the other battlefield games and want to carry on their battlefield yeah, experience weary, weary absolutely battlefield, yeah man. yeah so there you go, ladies and gents. Battlefield 1. It's only like 150 quid if you want to get the deluxe version of something. But let's be honest though, mate. You cannot put a price on a textbook bayonet charge. No, no, I kept, I kept missing mine, so. <laughs> Battlefield 1? Well, good. Not bad. Formulaic. Everything we expected from a battlefield. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they had a nice campaign. It wasn't too long, but it was still really, really good. And the multiplayer felt like a battlefield multiplayer. Obviously, mm. World War One, but amazing gameplay. Amazing. Yeah. Not for me, but I prefer the COD style, which is unexpected. Uh, if you like that game, what, what are you shaking your head at? I'm not allowed to have a preference now. No. If you like that video, check out our previous <laughs> video. It was on Beholder, which is about being a fascist dictator and bullying your tenants and spying on them. I found it really good. It's you. <laughs> it is me. <laughs> See you later, guys. Bye-bye.